Uh, Coach, Coach Neighbors said that he's watched Michaela since eighth grade, and he said that you can try to stop her from getting to her spot, but you can't. Um, what, what exactly does that mean from a coaching pr perspective? Well, she's a three-dimensional player. Michaela can take you off the dribble and get layups. She can stop and shoot the mid-range, and she can shoot the three ball. So she can get anywhere she needs to on the floor. Um, all that's what she brought to LSU. That's not something we've developed. Uh, what we're trying to do now is make her be that all-around player defensively. She had nine rebounds. I was hoping to get her that tenth one, uh, but I get nervous late in the game when you, you don't need them on the floor. Um, so she's just – her body, she's just strong. I think she said it best. When she just gets in shape shape, she's going to be that defensive stopper. She's got length, she's got size, she's got strength. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's what he was talking about, but she can just go where she needs to get. Let me say this, because I don't think we talk enough about our bench, the kids that come in. If you look at Aaliyah, you look at Janae, those kids came in very confident shooting the ball. Each of them scored a couple baskets. But then you take the rest that played. They gave you something. They gave you a couple rebounds. They, they gave you a bucket. Um, it was good. It was parents' day, and um, you can't draw it up like that very often. So I was proud that all of them got to play and contribute and do something. Kim, you've devoted your life to this game. I'm sure that you've played in and coached in a lot of empty gyms. You've spent time trying to convince people to invest in women's basketball. You come in here, it's chaos. The crowd loves you, loves this team. I guess I'm curious, you know, has the novelty of that worn off or are you still impressed? And what's it like to be at a school that is investing? Um, it's funny you ask that question. I just had somebody give me this. The lady Texters, where I play, just had their 50th anniversary. Um, I didn't play in a lot of empty gyms. I haven't been in a lot of empty gyms. I've been the recipient of a lot of women that came before me. And that's why history really, really means a lot to me. I know the stories I've heard from those who came before me. And I've been blessed to learn from the best, respect this game and play it and coach it the right way. And all I ever want is players to have that feeling of what it feels like to win a championship, to win a, a game you're not supposed to win, to run out that tunnel and look around and go, wow, <coughs> to leave a game and you can't get to your car without security. Um, what is different, the game has grown, but there's something about Iowa and LSU from that national championship that has continued. I was watching Iowa and Ohio State today, and the, the, the graphic on the uh, tele telecast is the same graphic that we have here. When they go on the road, they break records in attendance. We are doing that. So what is it? Because we're not the only two teams through the history of the game that have been good and dominated. And it has to be the personalities. It has to be social media. It has to be more media attention. Um, it has to be more television. It has to be all those things that those that came before us did not have. Um, do you always do, have a fa family day, like in the middle of the season? Yeah. Have, come, what, we have what, family what, day. What uh, was the impetus for that? I'm just, I was just curious. Why do I do it? Yeah, I mean. Because without those parents, I don't have kids to coach. <laughs> Without grandparents, parents, I don't have kids to coach. Um, there's more to this game than just going to practice every day and going to play a game. I think uh, families, um, I don't know. I, I don't know if other programs do it. We've always done it. Uh, did it when I was a player at Louisiana Tech. And uh, it's just something that I think fans want to see What's Angel's dead mom? What's Angel? You know, what's she look like? What is she talk? You know, it's just, it's a good thing. It's a healthy thing. And uh, since, since the Auburn game, it seemed like y'all obviously improved on defense. 
I'm sure there's been lots of, I'm sure they get a lot, I'm sure you get a lot about, about this game that's coming up Thursday, but it seems like you have to be pleased with the response and the, the play and the, and the focus that you've seen. I really was. I was, uh, I was pleased at Alabama the other night, even though we went in halftime um, down a, a point or two. Um, I could see things that had nothing to do with the score that we were doing better. And I just thought, if we can head down this road and we can keep that focus in the areas that I'm talking about, we're going to get better. And um, I, I thought you you saw that today. I thought you saw that today. It was a, a game that um, we pretty much were um, we, we pretty much were special on both ends of the floor. Yeah, coach. Um... I mean, since the Auburn game, uh, offensively, uh, what have you liked about uh, just the pace I was playing with, the spacing, and just the overall? Um, composure, composure, leadership in practice. Um, in the Auburn game, I think we were all looking for somebody else to make a play. You do it. No, you do it. No. And, and that goes with me as a coach as well. You've never seen me run that 1-4 down with Angel Reese. Well, there was a reason for it. I didn't just all of a sudden, you know, go brain dead. I didn't know if Angel was going to get the ball back or not. That's how we struggled that night, and I always credit the opponent. Auburn made it that way, and it it was that kind of game from start to finish. Kim, it seemed like today in the first half, uh, Haley last year, Michaela Flage was able to to drive and and do a little bit of addition and kicking, and and obviously the ladies knocked up, knocked down some open shots, but. It seemed like when you come out in the second half, let's, let's feed the ball inside. Was it was today kind of a, a flash of you guys potentially showing ways that you can win games and, and in a variety of ways? Well, I think you're right. It looked that way, but it wasn't by design. It wasn't like we went in at halftime and said, "Oh, we got to have more touches here." That kind of comment would be made through the course of a game. You know, I can make a, a quick hit call. Uh, if I needed this touch or this one to touch it, I think it was just they were playing very confident, very free, pushing the ball up the floor, um, just doing a lot of active things, and uh, the crowd got into it, and it was just one of those games that it was entertainment. What has worked uh, defensively the last two games? Well, I think helping each other. I think that... Um, who was the big helper today? It was your post players. It was Angel. It was Aaliyah. It was Morrow. When the, their post player would set the screen up there, one of the things Arkansas wants to do is they want to turn that corner and they want to get to um, to get a layup or they want to get to the foul line. You know they're going to shoot threes. And I just challenged the post, just switch that. You can guard, move your feet. Aaliyah would be the one you'd get nervous because she's a freshman. She's bigger. Uh, the other two? Switch, just switch, help Haley, help Flage, help Michaela, help all those guards. And those are things that are in a scouting report. Those are things you can make a decision on in the middle of a game. And I thought that um, it was good for us and we didn't have a problem communicating and doing things like that. Got time for a couple more. Kim, your team has so much star power, to your point. And so at the beginning, Angel's not scoring very much. And then at the end of the game, you look, she has 16 points, 17 rebounds. Um, are so you, she is scoring a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, by the end. You know, what I'm curious about is, are you, as a basketball fan, impressed by her and what she can continually put on a stat sheet, even when she's being the focus of a defense a lot? I'm impressed because I see it every day. Here's what I tell those who want to critique Angel's game. Be careful. Be careful. The girl will battle you. She's strong. Don't sit and tell me what she can't do. You need to understand what she has done. Four state championships in high school, a national championship in college. It's called a winner. And um, Angel figures it out. Angel literally could lead our team in assist. And she would just go crazy if she did. She, she really loves to pass the ball. How many bigs do you see throw it over their head in the Alabama game? And did, she, Haley didn't even have to move. Um, so Angel takes great pleasure in uh, doing things um, 
maybe that a lot of post players don't do. One more question here in the back with Mike. Coach, um, Coach um, Michaela said no one's going to out-hustle y'all. Um, are you shocked? Uh, maybe not shocked is the word, but that they get uh, as upset at you like after a game after like Auburn. Do, do you necessarily have to work the room or they're as upset as you are? Well, let me quickly tell you, no player will ever be upset as I am. That's not possible. And I tell them that. Coach does not expect that. That's not fair. But what I do is I talk to them in those moments and hold them accountable more than giving them an ass chewing. There's a time to do the ass chewing and there's a time to make them hurt, but let's go back to work. And um, in that locker room after the Auburn loss, we were in there a long time. And um, I made them talk. I made them talk. You tell me what you could have done better. You tell me what you're going to do better. Because um, they have to take ownership. I can lead. I can lead as a coach. I can lead you. But at the end of the day, I can't pass, I can't shoot it, and I can't dribble it for you. But part of all of that that needs to be corrected or needed to be corrected after the Auburn starts with leadership. And it needs to be all of them. They're all very capable of leading because they're good, great players. Don't wait for somebody else. Let's all do it collectively. We good? Yes. Thank you all.